My dearly beloved in Christ, <clears throat> this morning for the sermon, I would like to reflect upon the last line of the epistle and also the last line of the gospel. In the epistle, St. Paul concludes after talking about the people in the Old Testament who had been so blessed by God, he concludes by saying, with most of them, God was not well pleased. And that is indeed a very striking statement when you think about how especially the people who are the ones he is particularly talking about, who were led out of Egypt, out of slavery, they witnessed the ten plagues that were sent to the Egyptians. They witnessed the Red Sea dividing where they could walk through with a wall of water on each side, which then after they had walked through, it came back and covered and drowned Pharaoh and his army. They witnessed Moses going up on the mountain and how there was thunder and lightning and a cloud coming down on the mountain when he received the Ten Commandments. They fed every day. They were fed with the miraculous manna which appeared on the ground miraculously and fed them. And so many other miracles. And to think that these people who had been given so much could turn around and make the golden calf and worship it. That is why St. Paul says, with most of them, God was not well pleased. And again, that is a very sad fact of human nature, how easily we devolve into sin and laxity and complacency. And St. Paul even says, I chastise my body and bring it into subjection, lest having preached to others, I myself should be rejected. And that should cause us to have a healthy fear of our own weakness. And then we go to the gospel, and our Lord, after telling the parable, concludes the parable with these words, Many are called, but few are chosen. We all have been called. Will we be chosen? And so both of these statements at the conclusion of the epistle and the conclusion of the gospel deal with the theme of fear. A healthy, a good fear. And you know that fear of the Lord is one of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. It is a good thing that we have this fear of God's just punishments. And remember that saying in the Old Testament, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So fear is a good thing as long it is, as it is a proper fear, a filial fear of God, reverence for Him, and his holiness, and not wanting to offend him, and an awareness that God will justly punish sin. Now, we don't want to have this dreadful fear that is something that cramps the soul and keeps us from loving and serving God. But we also don't want to lose fear entirely. The imitation of Christ says something interesting, which I will paraphrase, and it says that love is better than fear. So when you serve God from love, rather than just out of fear of his just punishments, it's more meritorious, it's more pleasing to him to serve God from love. But the imitation says, if you give up fear, you will not for long keep love. We always have to maintain that fear, even though we strive to love, to serve God from love and to love him more and more, we always must have that fear. And I would say, if you look back at what happened at Vatican II, those of us who lived through the 1960s, I remember you heard all this preaching about love and joy and the mercy of God, etc. And what is the devotion they constantly preach in the Vatican II church? The divine mercy. And what's happening, or has happened, is an exaggeration of God's forgiveness, his mercy, his love, his goodness towards mankind, and a forgetfulness of his mercy, to a point they've completely forgotten it. And you know, it's all over the news, that there has been terrible, terrible scandal of clergy abuse of minors. And you think, how could this happen? It's because of a loss of of the sense of sin, a loss of the fear of God. So fear is necessary. Fear is good. And in fact, those who have been reading the Reign of Mary, the last couple issues 
we have been following an interesting story about an archbishop, uh, Carlo Maria Vigano, who was the apostolic delegate to the United States uh, for about five years and now is in retirement. And he was born in 1941. He's 78 years old. He was ordained in the traditional rite, but would not be a valid bishop because he was consecrated a bishop in the new rite. But at any rate, he has an understanding of Catholic teaching. He has a Catholic sense. And I was quoting in the last issue of the Reign of Mary from one of the public letters that he wrote. It started, the first one was in late August of last year. And in this public letter, he was denouncing the so-called Pope, Francis, for his um, failure to correct abuses. And especially, he says, I told him myself of a particular problem, and he just completely ignored it, didn't take care of the problem. And so he denounced Francis and then went into hiding. And in the third letter that he wrote, I believe it was the third one, this is what he says, explaining why he came out publicly with these statements. He said, I am an old man, one who knows he must soon give an accounting to the judge for his actions and omissions, one who fears him who can cast both body and soul into hell. A judge who even in his infinite mercy will render to every person salvation or damnation according to what he has deserved. I believe that my continued silence would put many souls at risk and would certainly damn my own. Now this is incredible because you don't find this in the Novus Ordo Church. They've totally lost, for the most part, the fear of God. But this man shows that he has a Catholic way of thinking. And we should pray for him that he has the grace to leave that modernist, that apostate church, and return to the true church. But again, he has a Catholic way of thinking. And he's quoting our Lord. What did our Lord say? Do not fear him who can destroy the body, but fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. And he quotes our Lord there and says, I fear for my own salvation if I keep silent, knowing what I know. So he has the fear of the Lord. And that's something that we must have. Again, getting back to what the imitation of Christ said, if you just concentrate on the love of God and you completely lose fear, you won't keep the love very long. Fear of the Lord is a good thing. A reverential filial fear. And that even leads to a love of God. God who is so good, but also God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. So when we think of those words of our Lord, many are called, few are chosen. We all have been called. Let us so live that we will be chosen by him at the end of our lives to enter into the kingdom of heaven prepared for us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.